take a deep breath. I've just breathed in a million, 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 million atoms of oxygen, which shows you how small an atom is. But an atom isn't the smallest thing. At the heart of the atom is the atomic nucleus. And if I could expand that oxygen atom to the size of a cathedral, the nucleus would be no bigger than a fly. So number two, how do we know the atomic nucleus is there? Well, Ernest Rutherford, just over 100 years ago, fired alpha particles, positively charged particles, at atoms. And they bounced back very violently. He said it was like firing a 14-inch shell at a sheet of tissue paper and seeing it recoil. It was quite amazing. And that showed there was something going on inside the atom, and he interpreted all the results, and it showed there was a very dense, compact, positive centre, which we now call the atomic nucleus. Number three, different elements have different atomic nuclei. The simplest element, hydrogen, has just a single particle at the centre called a proton, positively charged. Move up the periodic table to helium, it's got two. Lithium, three. Lead has got 82, and uranium has got 92. One element differs from the next by the number of positive charges on the nucleus in the middle. The fourth thing is that protons aren't the only things in the atomic nucleus. There's a thing called a neutron, which is like a neutral version of the proton. No electric charge. You can add neutrons to a nucleus, which adds mass to the nucleus, but it doesn't change the chemical element. And these different combinations of a single element are called isotopes. Number five is the paradox. Why does the atomic nucleus exist at all? Because there's all those positively charged protons clumped tightly together. And yet the golden rule of electrical forces is light charges repel. So why don't they just explode apart? Well, the answer is there's a very powerful force called the strong force, which attracts protons and neutrons when they touch. And that's what holds the nucleus together. So the neutral neutrons, which don't feel the electrical disruption, are very important in helping nuclei stabilise. Number six, radioactivity. Not all nuclei are stable. Some decay and change form, emitting radiation in the form of alpha, beta and gamma rays. Number seven, perhaps the most famous unstable nucleus, is the case of uranium and the property called fission. Uranium has got so many protons, it's only just able to hold together. And the slightest nudge, like a single passing neutron, can split it into two. That's what we call fission. And that releases energy, thousands of times as much energy as you get in an ordinary chemical reaction. Number eight, we had fission, now we have fusion. At the other end of the periodic table, where hydrogen lives, light elements, if they join together, can release energy. And that's called fusion releasing energy. So for example, hydrogen, which is the fuel in the sun, when hydrogen joins together, it can turn into helium, the next element in the periodic table, and release some energy, which eventually we feel here as sunlight. Number nine, one of the miracles of nature, is that if three helium nuclei happen to touch, magically, this is exactly the same as what's called a resonance level of carbon. And that is how carbon is made. And in hotter and hotter stars, you can build up heavier and heavier elements until eventually, in some cases, the star explodes, called a supernova, throws all of these elements out into space, and eventually they might form the seeds of planets and other stars and people someplace. Number 10 is the nucleus as a detective. The phenomenon of radioactivity gives us a natural chronometer, like in uranium, its half-life, that means if you have a sample of uranium atoms, half of them will have decayed after about five billion years, which is the age of the Earth pretty well. And so by measuring the abundance of different isotopes of elements like uranium, we can work out the age of the Earth. 